Welcome, my friends. This will be part one of a daily short video series on the Polygon.io API. So for those of you guys who are not familiar, Polygon.io is a super duper whooper uh, data provider. They provide um, great historical data on stocks, options, indices, and currencies. They provide like uh, trade level data, a web socket connections, and historical bar data. Um, so um, this is gonna eventually power some of our advanced uh, trading strategies and maybe some ML algorithms. Uh, we're going to power some RAG applications with this and um, some dashboards. So uh, stay tuned. So um, first, uh, in this video, we're just going to show you how to get historical bar data. So to get started, um, you go to the Polygon.io website and um, you go to pricing. So before you guys get scared of the pricing thing, there's a free tier that gives you like really what you want. Uh, like for a lot of these videos. Um, so that gives you like historical uh, data, like historical bar data for two years. Um, you'll, you can get fundamental data, you can get corporate actions, even technical indicators. The only thing is, is once you need like, um, like real time data, like WebSocket and snapshots and things like that, you're gonna have to go to these plans. You can already get snapshot data uh, with these plans, which is cool. Um, so anyways, and another limitation is there's five API calls a minute, but for most of our purposes, this will be good enough. So let's get started. So in this video, of course, we want to get historical bar data. So to get started, um, I have linked the get started uh, page. This gives you uh, a, uh, a API. Um, so two things. Number one, uh, you can click the client library Python because we're going to do things in Python. But before, I just wanted to show you is like, you can look at market data endpoints and you can click like Apple, multiplier, time span, from, to, whatever, to give you guys an idea of these parameters. And then you can do run query and you get like a query of the answer uh, of how the JSON looks, for example. So that is good if you like later want to know like what some of these parameters mean. But we're going to be using the Python library, so let's jump to that. So it gives you their GitHub page. And I, I'm an example type person. So if you go to um, examples, you have many examples. Um, and uh, there is the REST API. So specifically for stocks, if you go stock, you get stocks aggregate bars, stock uh, ag bars, and this is what we're going to be using. Okay. But um, just one more small comment is if you go here, you have like the official read docs, but we're not going to be using that in this video. We're going to just use that example. So let's get started. Okay. So first thing at first is you actually are going to uh, need to install the client library. So let's uh, do that. So we're going to do pip install. This is the Python client library. Install polygon. I guess it remembers my uh, previous uh, notebook for the video that um, ended up having a volume issue. So you install the client library. Okay, next thing is you need your API key. So the proper thing is not to show you guys my API key, but I'm showing you guys it and hopefully I'll uh, delete it and get a new key. So you can copy your API key. Like I said, uh, a little bit too fast as you go to the dashboard, you click dashboard and then API keys, you get your API key, you copy the API key and then if you're using, for example, uh, Google Collab, you can put it in secrets. You have Polygon API key. You can copy and paste the value here. And then when you want to use the key, you do userdata.get. And, the, and then what you saved as the name, I called it po uh, Polygon API key. So let's do that. Um, so we do um, from uh, Google. You don't have to do this. Uh, dot collab import user data data uh, and then you do uh, my API key equals user data dot get dot get uh, and then I call it what did I call it? I called it polygon polygon API key so then it's gonna say grant access and by the way, if you guys don't want to do this step, you can just do my API key equals paste whatever that, that was here. Uh, I just wanted to maybe do the more proper thing. So now let's connect to the client. 
and this is where you put in your API key. So from Polygon, import REST uh, client, and then uh, client equals REST client, uh, and API key equals my API key. Nice how the AI figured that out. Um, so I connected, ooh, what did I do wrong? I, um, poly I, I installed the wrong thing. Oh, uh, Polygon API client. Sorry about that, guys. Um, okay, so now I connect to the client once the install is done. And uh, while we're waiting for that, we're gonna use uh, this a function called client.listags to get the time bars, right? So um, you can call the help on the documentation client.listags to get like information on the parameters and like the outputs. The help for these functions, the doc strings are amazing, highly recommend them. But basically the most important thing is you need the ticker like Tesla, you need a multiplier. If it's one minute, it'll be one, five minutes will be five. Time span would be minutes, uh, uh, hours, days, whatever. Um, even seconds, but seconds you do need the um, uh, paid package. So we're gonna use minutes here. So uh, those are the most important thing. And then there's another important thing called limit. So the what, what happens is like each API call, you can only get, you only get limit rows back and by default, the limit is 5,000. So if you have five API calls in a minute max, you only get 2,500. So let me kind of illustrate this point for a second. Um, and then um, we'll do the, uh, a proper way to handle it. So like, I'm going to need this uh, pandas later. I'm going to make a, no, I won't need pandas for this part. We'll need it uh, here. But I'm going to later need time because to handle the maximum of, uh, five API calls a minute, I'm gonna need time because I'm gonna do time.sleep. But let's uh, ignore that for a second. If I do bars equals like this, and I do uh, four, I can do four, because it's an iterator, this thing, in client.listags, I, I can do ticker equals Tesla, I can do multiplier equals one for one minute, and I can do uh, time span, span equals uh, um, minute, and I can do uh, from, let's do, because you get up to two years of data, so let's do 2000, let's just do something super uh, before two years, 2021, 101, and then let's do two, and uh, the paid plans have way more years of data, um, but two years is more than enough for most of us. But look how easy it is. So this is all you need. But I didn't put the limit parameter. I just want to show you what happens. So like I said, you have five API calls a minute. Oops. <laughs> so this is an iterator. So I have to iterate over this. And then I, I append the bars. Each time I get a bar here, I append the bar. So uh, so every time uh, one uh, limit, which is by default 5,000 bars come, it, calls, it counts as one API call. But um, since it's an iterator, it still does one at a time. So let me show you how this works. So I do bars that append bar, and then, uh, oh, uh, multiplier. Okay, oops, uh, two, two is like this, okay. So now, if I go uh, length, see I get this error, because I use more than five API calls a minute. And also if I do length bars, I get 25,000, because it's 5,000, a limit of 5,000 by default times five. So we, A, uh, two things. A, we don't want this error. We wanna handle the API limit um, requirements. And B, uh, we're fetching only 5,000 at a time. Uh, we can fetch up to uh, 50,000. So let's do those two improvements for a second. Let's do max uh, uh, limit equals, the max you can do is 50,000. Uh, for commas, you can do this, by the way, in Python. So I do limit equals max limit. And then the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to every time, um, basically every time we have five API calls, I want to sleep for a minute. So that way we can handle the five API calls a minute because even with the 50,000 limit, we get 250,000 uh, um, uh, rows for five calls and that's still not enough. Um, so let's uh, do that for a second. So we can do, um, okay, so let's do that for a second. So we can do uh, 
every five calls. So what is five calls? That's when if length of bars equals uh, ma uh, max limits times five. So it remembers my previous code, that's cool. So I, I'm gonna write sleeping for one minute and I'm also going to, um, let's just print the length of bars. Uh, and I'll, I'll write, um, we have, um, bars so far. Okay, so this should uh, be good. Okay, so let's uh, show you guys how this works. So this should work. Um, so now, uh, every five API calls, which is 250,000 now bars, it's gonna sleep for a, one minute. Oh, <laughs> I should have uh, written this before, so it would have printed before. But after the sleep is done, you'll see it'll say 250,000, and then it'll go to the next thing. Um, so while that's waiting, I do want to say um, that uh, I actually uh, found this YouTube channel, Adam Get Bags, and he has some really cool videos that have overlap with this, but eventually I'll get to things that are very different. And he's very good, very entertaining, so I recommend his channel. I, I put the link here. Um, so highly recommend his channel. He's very good and very fun to listen to. He's not boring like me. Anyways, but um, I hope to meet him one day because he sounds really cool, but hopefully I'll have as little overlap as possible. Okay, so while this eventually finishes, uh, the sleeping a minute is really, uh, gives you that awkward pa pause. Oh, like and subscribe, by the way. Daily video on this thing so you guys will enjoy. Um, the more likes, the more smiles in this world. Okay, so... Uh, so now you have, uh, so after the first one, you had 250,000 bars. And then after it finished when it's done, and that's at 450,000 or so bars. Okay, so that's great. So now um, what we want to do is we also always want to work in data frames. So we can make it a data frame. You can do pd.data frame. Oh, let's look at bars, by the way. Let's look at bars minus one, just to the hell of it. You see you have the open, high, low, close, volume. VWAP timestamp in a weird, weird um, uh, Unix timestamp looking thing. Transactions equals 60 and uh, over the counter equals none. So uh, pd.dataframe equals um, bars gives you a data frame. And then let's just print out how to show you how it looks like. So remember, uh, we had this ugly looking timestamp column. So we want to turn that into Pyth uh, in a pandas date time. So let's do that. And by the way, look at it. You have the hope, open, high, low, close, volume, uh, weighted, uh, the VWAP, timestamp, and number of transactions. So look, now if we want to turn it into date time, and we can do df. Um, uh, the timestamp column to date time, we can just do timestamp equals, uh, equals pd. That to date time, it's, uh, it's cool. I remembered my previous code. Um, so it gives you the timestamp. So now I just print it to look how it looks like. So you see you have uh, uh, you have a timestamp from June 21 to June 18th. That's about two years, like the max we can get. Just a small note: if you don't need to worry about like API limits, you can literally just directly uh, do this thing uh, without like looping and stuff. Um, but because uh, we do care about API limits. Uh, we're gonna get an error. I guess I don't have a limit max, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, I can I can do like this, and I'm gonna get an error. So if you have the higher tier versions, you can just run it like this. You don't need the loop thing. Um, and yeah, thanks. Please like and subscribe. Um, I'll have a daily video on polygon.io for like maybe the next two, three weeks, because it'll power a lot of the future videos I want. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Again, this channel is great.